and welcome to the Mark Few Show. I'm Greg Heister. Coach Few is actually on his way back to Spokane from Winston-Salem. He's in the jet right now. We hope to get him on the horn here before the end of the show. So let's get things rolling by taking a look back at the week that was. Wins against Lafayette and a win against Oklahoma State. The Athletic Center, Gonzaga does not lose often here. And in town tonight, Lafayette College out of the Patriot League. He doesn't miss much from there, shooting nearly 60% from behind the arc. You know, I think we came out and, and did a lot of things that, you know, the coaches were stressing from us in practice. And, um, you know, these games are tough just because, you know, it's a different atmosphere. I'm um, not having the students, and you know, it's very hard to get yourself going. But, um, you know, we did a pretty good job of that, I think. Goodson knifing to the rim. And Goodson now with two more. Way to go, Goodson! There's a lob inside. Olenek, the catch left hand. Good. Tied at 13. Olenek for three. Guys brought a lot of energy off the bench and came in and picked us up. And I think, like, Kelly Olenek. Olenek spins to the middle. Woo! All the way and gets the roll. He's got it all in the repertoire tonight. No, Olenek with six points. Goodson driving to the rim and two more. Meach with eight points. We talked to him about pushing the ball, pushing the ball, being aggressive, and getting the game going up and down. That was a great play by Meach. Head up, off the dribble. I thought he was uh, terrific tonight. Spinning on Sacre, off the glass, no good. Now Goodson again, pushing it hard. Right oh, 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 finger roll, Goodson to four. Uh-oh, look out. Bang! Oh, Big 12, there's that play again. Wow! Gray to Harris. Picked it up. Oh, Lennox with the big offensive butt back. There's a tip jam under a minute to go. Eight points now for Olenek. Oh, oh, what a feed. Goodson to Sacre. I thought there was a lot of good things tonight from Meeks being a good point guard to Robert being a good post-up player. And he's going to have his gonna work uh, cut out for him uh, against the type of athletes that Oklahoma State has. And Happy New Year's Eve from us here in Spokane, Washington. Gonzaga Bulldogs at home against the Cowboys from Oklahoma State. Fans here want one more victory for Mark Pugh to get to 300. Elias Harris starting to turn it on. Late 2010 scores baseline versus Gonzaga Bucket. You know, we came in with a goal of, of beating them on the glass, and, and they are an exceptional rebounding team because they're tough and they're athletic. I thought that was a big key to the game. Elias, it's great to see him back attacking, you know, like he was when he was at his best last year. Give Sacre a look, he threw an elbow, no Harris with the two-hand dunk. Travis Harris runs the floor. Time performance tonight. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was so good to see today. It was unbelievable. I mean, everybody just stepped up. Now the Bulldogs are up in transition. Scoops it in. Now Gray, Outlet, Sacre for two. Bulldogs have the fans on the feet. Well, Xavier didn't score against Lafayette. What a rejection by Sacre. Now Stockton at the buzzer. I didn't. I wasn't even aware of it until uh, they announced it, and then Hertz made a big deal in there. Uh, I, you know, they're they're so hard to come by. I mean, I, I don't think people, only coaches, know how hard they really are. Every one of them. I mean, you're sweating it. 
from Lafayette, uh, you're nervous and, and want your guys prepared and every single one of them. So uh, uh, I, don't know, I can't believe I'm at 300 already. 300 wins. What a career already for head coach Mark Few here at Gonzaga. We had a chance to catch up with him a little bit earlier on the telephone after the game at Wake Forest. Hey, you got to feel pretty good after that win, coach. Yeah, no, hey, I really put our guys behind the eight ball with this scheduling <laughs> deal. And then the start at 10 a.m. our time, which is basically about 36 hours after the game, we flew five hours to play a ACC big uh, team like them. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of the guys. They really showed their toughness and their character and, and uh, weren't able to really fight through it. And uh, this is six wins in a row. What, what do you think's been the biggest difference between these six in a row versus the three prior? We're starting to get guys healthy. I, I don't think people realize that Elias Harris is not healthy for the first four or five weeks of our season here. He's starting around into shape, and then Steve uh, went down. So we haven't had a whole team. Even though they're out on the floor and they're giving everything they could, for the team and the program, they, they weren't healthy. I mean, obviously, Elias has bounced around and attacking better, and, and now we've seen that the last game and a half with Steve. We've had freshmen all the way through the backcourt out uh, on the floor for long stretches during this, these runs. You know, we can win games with our defense and some toughness. Are you happy where this team is at as we, we look at Portland next? You know, you're never totally ecstatic. Well, you always want to be better. That's the... That's, uh, that's the dilemma and the torture that is coaching. Ecstatic of, of where they are relative to where we were driving home from Pullman. <laughs> you know, or where it didn't look like we could. I mean, the way we played that night, I don't think we could have won another game on our schedule. You know, I think Rob and Steve were able to do some leading, and, and we were able to finally practice a little bit and get back to some of our core beliefs, and they've done a real nice job of that. I mean, we're getting the ball to the right guys at the right spots, and that's what's making us effective on the offensive end. Hey, Coach, enjoy your trip home. Yeah. All right, let's take our first time out. When we come back, we'll get to the Coeur Casino Fan Question of the Week. But first, the Rada Paint Finish of the Week. What a rejection by Sacre. Now Stockton at the buzzer. Makes it in. Rada, fresh local paint made in the Northwest for our Northwest environment because just like in hoops, it's the finish that counts. Welcome back to the Mark Few Show. Time now for our Coeur d'Alene Casino Fan Question of the Week. Now, we're pretty smart around here. We knew that Coach Few was not going to be around here physically for us to do this, so we actually sat down with him last week and did two questions. Here's Coach Few with our Coeur d'Alene Casino Fan Question of the Week. All right, Coach, the question is from Terry from Bonners Ferry. How do you instill the culture of the program and the spirit of the Zags into new players who may not know all the history? Well, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have two former Zags working for us. Alex Hernandez has got a personality as big as the uh, kennel, and, he, and he's as competitive a guy as I, I've ever coached, and, he, and it's infectious. And then Brian Michelson, you know, is also the epitome of the program, too. He's, he's smart. He's, he's very thorough. Uh, I think between the two of them and, and between the staff, you know, Tommy and I have been here through uh, pretty much the whole run, or at least I have, and Tommy has been here pretty much through the whole thing. But, you know, we also use the, the decade of excellence. You know, I mean, guys like to watch things, and, and uh, whether it's movies or video games or whatever, and we use that. It's a great kind of uh, <clears throat> history of our program and how it happened and why it happened, and, and, and it's required watching. Uh, uh, by our players, and uh, I, 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 it's a great DVD, and it kind of sums everything up. And they get to see the guys they see on the wall, their pictures in the locker room, or, or around the arena, and, and uh, see highlights of them, and see them talking real stuff. Terry from Bonners Ferry, thank you very much. Keep those questions coming. Here's what's coming up next on the Mark Few Show. We should always have a feel of who has the first best look, who has the second best look, and who has the third best look, right? Wednesday at 6 on FSN and FSN HD. 
welcome back to the Mark Few Show. The good guys or the zebras, you know, the basketball officials who would ever want to do that job. One of the worst in America, I think. Well, Dick Cartmel has certainly carved out a niche for himself. He's one of the best college basketball officials across the entire land. And we had a chance to go all access with Dick. Here's John Fritz with more. It is packed to the rafters with passion. A den of frenzy overflowing with the fervor of its devotion. A setting so engaging, aside from the visitors, it's hard to imagine it could ever alienate anyone. Unless, of course, this is your calling. Good thing there's five seconds left. He's trying to get that shot out. Just jump right into him. It works out real well. Where a running commentary on credibility comes from every angle. And the fans are, you know, I always say that you know, they're blind with loyalty, right? They want every call to go their way. Coach wants, every time a guy quick, makes a quick move, they want to travel. Right? You just got to have inner belief in yourself that you know what's going on and be able to withstand all the hooting and hollering, right? Guys who can do that, have that real true inner belief, are probably the better officials. 35, body in here. Dick Cartmel has officiated collegiate basketball for more than 30 years, the last 26 here in the WCC. This way. Along the way, his travels have taken him from the junior college ranks all the way to five Final Fours. 34, block two. When I played, I was kind of one of those guys that played and coached and refed all at the same time. Easy, easy. You know, one of those guys that drove the referees probably nuts. 25, too much. I knew I was either going to coach or ref. Now, he does a little bit of both. I'll tell you when, go. Easy, easy. And hey, don't wrestle, because it's a free throw. One, just come down and seal. Don't drive through them and drive them an extra four feet. 22 and 35, use your feet. This way. On this night, a common task, leading a team together for the very first time. I don't remember ever working with either one of you. My number one deal is just, let's just try not to guess, okay? Let's just stay away from guessing. We're gonna let them make good blocks on top with a patient whistle, staying away from guessing. We're gonna let them make good strips, and we're gonna let them make good fast moves to the basket without calling traveling. Let's really see traveling before we call it. The game's about freedom of movement, right? And, and freedom of movement is, is usually off ball. If we take care of that off ball stuff, we're going to do a great job on freedom of movement. That's just going to allow us the game to go smoother. We're yeah. Be able to get a good flow to the game if we get it sharpened. Yeah. Five to eight. We're all kind of like-minded because of our terminology and our training. You know that I can work with a new guy. He's talked about and looked at the same things that I've reffed with a guy for 20 years about. Ask any of them, and it is the training that makes possible the transition to game time. This is that high edge. See how right. high he's coming right. up all while staying on top together of every move their sport makes. We have a Smug Mug website that uh, all the officials out on the west uh, are looking at the exact same place. And we get plays every week. And this is one that's, or one of the plays that came in on the Smug Mug that we can all review and take a look at. Right. So that was a terrific job. Yeah, stay home. I mean, yeah. We don't have to move out of that. So that's a good look. That was the best thing about this play, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was on top of it. You have to you have to free yourself of that guy that's usually standing in front of you. Absolutely. And yeah. with all the stuff out front anymore, that's your best look. Yeah. Yeah, because even here, one and a half steps high. Yeah. So you're, you you're right there. Angle, yeah. But still yeah. ready for the next yeah. competitive match. Yeah. You always got to work off that guy that's coming down and setting up there. early 70s right and no one touched each other right they're all off of each other and you know and spacing and now there's just it's evolved where there's just a, a, a lot more just tough defense I think coaches just teach more aggressive in your face defense don't bang and that's made the game evolve where it's so that makes the decisions tougher but this year really 